Hey everybody, Dungeon Builder back again. Just a quick video. I know some DMs are strictly like pen and paper. They use their journal. I tried that a few times, but personally, I'm a digital DM. I love having my laptop available. I have my laptop at every session. I just find it super handy uh, for taking notes, keeping track of all my stuff. Uh, but these are my three favorite websites uh, that I like to have open in different tabs while I'm running a game. Hopefully they're useful to you. Maybe you've heard of them before, maybe you haven't, but hey, Oh, also, I've got shirts. Check the link down in the description. I got some sweet shirt designs for sale. Uh, if you're looking for some sweet D&D t-shirts, I recommend going to check them out. It helps support me, and I appreciate it. Look at that. Peep that design right there. Look at that cool monster coming out of a dungeon. Oh, yeah. These are my top three websites that I like to use while I DM. Let's get into it. All right, so the very first website I want to talk about, this one I use pretty much every single session. It's called Combat Tracker uh, Improved Initiative App. Uh, this is the best site that I have found and best way I have found to keep track of initiative. Um, I don't do it any other way. It's super intuitive and easy. Uh, basically, you can import you know, any monsters that you want into this program. You can see I have like just tons and tons of monsters. And if you wanna create your own homebrew it's super easy. You just come in here, create a name for the monster, add in all the stats and abilities, save it, and boom. Um, you can even preview like a monster over here. Uh, you got your characters, so you can create either NPCs or your player characters and add them in here. So here's my party. Uh, it's a little out of date. Uh, Hector here has died. RIP Hector. Um, but when you click on them, you can see their stats over here. And I usually, for the player characters, I don't add in every single thing. I usually just put in like their health and their armor class. And even that, I don't keep up to date because I let my players take care of that. Um, encounter design. So let's say uh, the Beast of Barton. So your players, boom, run into the Beast. You hit that, adds it in. You hit play. Everybody rolls initiative. Nye, what did you get? You got an 11. Hector, you got 20, so on and so forth, and then boom, it takes you to the top of initiative, and you can either advance it one at a time, or you know you can keep track of it like this. Say Drosk here takes a hit from the beast and takes seven points of damage. You just put in seven, hit the check mark, and bam, it takes care of it, keeps track of it. Uh, what is cool, I don't use it, but there is a player view as well, so you can project just this list um, to your players so they can see who's coming up next and that sort of thing. Uh, in the player view, it doesn't show the hit points of the monster. It just shows the name, and as they take damage, the name changes from green to different shades of yellow and red, so they kind of get an idea of how bloodied it is without seeing the exact hit points, which is nice. Um, yeah, we can remove that, stop that, so we go back here. Um, it even has a list of spells. Um, another cool thing that I like about this is uh, the search feature. So let's say we want to look up uh, skeletons. Okay, here's all of our skeletons. Now say you want to make a variant, like you're going to a part of your world that has skeletons, but maybe they're slightly different or they, you want a harder version of the skeleton, you can come right here to this and actually edit it and you can save as a copy. So you can call this like, we'll call it hard skeleton. And then you can go through, make the hit points different, armor class, and just save that as a copy. So then when we hit save, boop, now we got hard skeleton right there. Pretty cool. I find this super handy. It's the best way for me to keep track of everything. It's quick, it's fast, easy, I love it. Um, they do have a Patreon, the person who made this site. They have a Patreon, and if you sign up on their Patreon, um, everything will sync with your Patreon account, so you don't have to worry about losing any data. Uh, that is the one problem, is that it's kind of cached in the browser. So if you clear your cache, or you go to a different computer, you might run the risk of losing some of that. But as long as you uh, come here and go to your account, and export your data. It'll export everything you have saved, spells, monsters, characters, NPCs. Just make sure you update that every time you get in here and update. I've already, unfortunately, you know, forgotten to export 
a couple months go by, something happens, and I'm like, crap, I lost everything. Uh, so as long as you keep up to date with it, it's super reliable, super great site. I can't recommend this enough. The best way to keep track of initiative for me personally on my laptop. And I love it just because it's super easy to like, boom, you hit this, I'm running the monster. I can see everything nice and clear here. I can see there are hit points. I can keep track of the hit points. I don't have to scribble, scratch notes of the hit points as it takes damage. I can see, okay, it's their turn. It makes multi-attack, boom, bite. It has everything clear for me to see, nice and easy. That's how I keep track of initiative. If I had to pick one website, only one website that I could use to run D&D, this would be it. All right, site number two, Asgar's Fantasy Map Generator. This is what I've used to generate all of my world maps. Uh, it's pretty fun. You kind of can mess around, put in a bunch of options. It gives you a bunch of different uh, things you can choose to not only what you can see on the map, you know, ah, emblems. Um, but when you're generating, it gives you a lot of ways to tweak it and you can kind of randomly generate until you get something you like and then you can go in and rename everything, delete uh, cities, move things around, move markers around. It's super nice and robust and this is what I've found to be great. And you can export these. I've exported some of these uh, files um, and then actually printed them out physically so that I can have them for reference for my players. And then if you like click on a city, you could actually give you like stats. It'll like show you like an image of the city, which is super cool. And that can actually take you to a different website that does the city generation. I know there's like incarnate maps, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to spend hours upon hours creating maps. I like that it kind of generates a lot of it and then you can go in and tinker. And I just like the kind of simplistic layout. It's just a very simple look. Nothing too wild and fancy, not overly stylized. Just looks like, you know, a parchment map in a way. And you can like adjust the colors if you want a more sepia tone or if you want more vibrant colors to distinguish between realms, that kind of thing. But overall, very easy to use, enjoy it, and I like the look of it. And then the third and final website that I would recommend is donjon.bin.sh. This website is just packed full of amazing stuff. It is so good. This is another one that I stumbled upon pretty early on. And the website itself is super simple format, mostly text, but it is loaded with randomness that in a good way. Uh, so if you look at the side here, it has generic fantasy, Avatar Legends, whatever that's, um, advanced D&D, D20 fantasy, Pathfinder, D&D 4E, 5E, Weird Fiction, which is like Call of Cthulhu, Science Fiction, Alien RPG, and Blade Runner, which they added recently. But it's great. So you go to like D&D 5e, which is what I mostly run, and say you need the quick reference. That'll open up, you know, all the very basic stuff that you can go over if you need it. Um, what I use it a lot for is random treasure generator. So I come here. Um, what level is my party? They're at level 11. You can do individual tre treasure, which is just gold, treasure with items, uh, treasure hoard, which is cool, treasure hoard with salvage, which is fun, gives you like different things, uh, like a star ruby, say you want something different, a barrel of fine clothes, three leather armors in a chest, that's kind of cool. Um, on top of that, like, you know, say you just go to like D20 fantasy, so a little more just generic, um, random generator, traps just boom a d10 list of traps boom new one so you could roll a d10 if you're just having them dungeon crawl you need a trap on the fly uh you need an npc you can just drill down gender race class and just generate random npcs on the fly i like to use the uh generic fantasy ones especially the inns I think they're great. It'll give you kind of like a brief description of what the inn looks like, the innkeeper's name, what's on the menu, which is pretty fun to have that on hand because, you know, things like that, it's so hard to improv like a menu. But here you come here, poof, just throws it right on the screen. It gives you some people that are within the inn, which is nice, and rumors. 
Um, a town generator if you're looking for like a random town that they stumble across in the woods very nice and handy gives you a basic idea of what it might look like so all kinds of fun things that you can mess around with in here uh, let me look at one of the other ones um, I know they have even like oh yeah random dungeon generator that's always handy random treasure map generator it's kind of goofy but Hey, if you need like a handout or something that you want to either send digitally or physically to your players, that's kind of cool. Even has a random adventure generator. So if you're really feeling like, you know, you just didn't have time to prep and you need to throw something together, this could give you some ideas. I don't, I've never used any of this verbatim, but I've definitely looked over it and tried to get, I mean, that it sparks the creative juices and gets it flowing. So all kinds of cool stuff. But those are the three that I use the most. I hope you found some use in them. Let me know if you've used them, any of these before, if you like them, maybe something I forgot to mention about it. Put that in the comments. Uh, your other favorite sites that you like to use to run your games, I'd love to hear because I'm sure there's a million sites out there that I've never heard of that might be even better than the ones I'm using. Let me know if you try them, what you think of them. And I appreciate you guys for watching and sticking around. Please hit like and subscribe for more videos. Keep on building, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.